Hello and welcome to the 34th tutorial in the C++ programming series and in this part we'll be looking at overloaded functions. Overloaded functions allow multiple implementations of a single function aka multiple functions that share the same name but are distinguished by the number of arguments they take or the type of arguments they take. And that is the way that the compiler can say ok you've called this particular function over this particular function. So let's just show you how this works. It's a very common practice to have multiple functions with the same name. Usually they perform very similar functionality, so that the parameters are slightly different. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create a function called name it function. Very original as you can tell. I'm going to make it take two float variables. And then we're going to just implement this, and in here we're just going to return a times by b. I'm going to do int function. What I'm going to do is the same, but we're going to have int a int b return a times by b semicolon. And if I were to just run this now. It succeeds. You know what's in the concept. It's just printing out what was there by default. But it does run. But if I were to let's change these to an integer, the, this one and this one, and now run it, it fails because it says functions that only differ in their return type cannot be overloaded. And because the only difference in these two functions is the return type, the compiler, if you were to call it, wouldn't know based on the parameters because the parameters are the same. So you have to either have different types and or a different number of parameters as well. So let's just demonstrate this running. So we're going to do std c out and then here we're going to do function free nine std n line now what we'll also do is we'll put std c out lowercase c not uppercase and we'll just simply put float function so you can exactly see that this one has been called or the other one we'll do std line copy and paste this here turn this to integer and now if we run this it comes up as integer function 27 but if we were to change these to float variables, so 3.78.f at the end, so it's a float variable, as you can see, it's a good thing to show you. So this quarter function is ambiguous because we've got a float variable and we've got an integer variable. But if we were to make both of them float, so 0.9f, it's a okay with that. So if we run it, it comes up a float function and it's 37.422. But we've covered Casting. So if we were to just cast this to an int, cast the other one to an int, run it, we get integer function, and what, what has happened is these two numbers have been truncated, so this becomes a 3, and this one becomes a 9, hence the result 27. So let's just get rid of that. That is it for this tutorial. That's how you use overloaded functions. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube, whatever you feel comfortable with. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. In the next part of this series, we'll be looking at function templates. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a nice day.